No, we are not doing that again. Hey all you Hulmaniacs, it's Hulmanator, and this is only my third time recording this because the footage keeps getting lost. Wahoo. So, I've been in New Zealand for a good, good reasonable amount of time now. I came here at the end of June, landed on the 29th, and I've been studying here since then. We are now on summer break, as I'm sure you are aware, and I just, I feel distant from my homeland. You know, I, I don't feel quite the same and so I thought maybe maybe I've changed what if I've changed how else am I going to solve whether I've changed and with an online quiz that's right today I'm going to be taking multiple British quizzes to see how British I am and whether I whether I should truly be allowed to return now to start with I thought we'd do something slightly simpler and try and work out where my accent is from because if it doesn't recognize my accent as a British one then maybe, maybe I don't deserve to go home. And to do that, I'm gonna take the quiz that came out earlier this year from the New York Times, trying to pinpoint exactly where in Britain or Ireland my accent is from. I was raised in the South by a Northerner and a Welshman. I go to uni in the North. I've lived in Wales for a significant chunk of time. I lived in Essex for a significant chunk of time and technically I'm a Cockney so I know a little bit of Cockney slang. Okay, let's start. How do I pronounce scone? Rhymes with gone. Okay. Which of these words, if any, would I use for a young person characterised by brash, loutish behaviour and often low social status? <sighs> okay, um... Oh, choose all to apply. Okay, I can pick multiple. Uh, Chav. Yeah. Um, a townie. Yeah. A yob. A lout. Which of these words would I use to describe a baby? I might use sprog. I wouldn't... Okay, babe in and of itself is just a weird term to me. How do I refer to my mother? That would be mum. Uh, do I refer to her by any other name? Well, I certainly don't refer to her as old dear. I think she might be mildly... If old lady! <laughs> yeah, I'll just go up to my mum and I'll be like, How's it going, old lady? Which of these would I use for not showing up for school? To skive, to ditch. Play hooky's a very American term, I feel. I don't think it's used that much in the UK. On the duck. I am very curious to know where that term came from originally. What context came up where someone needed to say, oh, he's on the duck? Which of these would I use for feeling unwell? Feeling off colour? That, that sounds a bit posh to me. I wouldn't use that, really. Sick. Ill. I don't really tend to swear that much, so probably not. Under the weather, maybe. Rough. Rough is definitely the main one I would use. Oh, I'm feeling rough today. Uh, which would I use for the child soft shoes? Okay, my dad and me had a strong debate uh, years ago when I first moved to Wales because I always knew them as plimp soles. But my dad, he would always say that they were pumps. Um, yeah, the, to me they are plimp soles, essentially. I will call them daps occasionally, as my dad does. But certainly not trainers or slippers. Those are very different things, in my opinion. Tennis shoes, again, different. Yeah, none of those would I use other than plimsolls, dabs, or pumps. Not dabs, daps. Those are very different things. Someone I think is stupid. So, pretty much everyone. In case you aren't aware, my general philosophy is everyone is an idiot, including myself. Now, the m smart people are the people who realise that they are an idiot and attempt to expand their own knowledge. They are still idiots, but at least they're trying. Pillock, yeah, I might use that. Thick, idiot, wazak occasionally, not often. I'd use DOS more for something that's easy, you know. Oh, it was a DOS to finish that. Plank, yup. Egypt, Egypt is an absolute classic. I like Egypt. Numpty, if they're just being a little bit stupid. Moron, absolutely. I have so many words to call people an idiot with. I even have words in Welsh and I think I know one in Spanish. 
How do I refer to my grandmother? Well, they're both dead, so I don't. <laughs> but when I did, I only ever knew one of my grandmothers. The one who I remember died when I was very young, so I barely remember her, but I do remember that we called her Nana. How do you pronounce the words but and put? They do not rhyme. I presume I presume this one is about where, how Welsh you are, because the Welsh uh, that I've met, those who have a strong Welsh accent generally will go but. So I guess but would rhyme with put. Which of these would I use for heavy rainfall? Uh, lashing, pouring, pissing down, raining cats and dogs, tipping it down, pelting, chucking, pretty much all of them. I'm from the UK, we get a lot of rain, we have to have a lot of words for it. What's the name for the playground game in which one child chases the rest and anyone who is touched becomes the pursuer? Hit! I like that, just, we call it hit, because you hit the person. The places that I came from, the places where I lived rather, we would either call it tag, which was in Wales, and I was never that fond of that, or we'd call it it, because you're it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Even when we played tag, you'd still say tag, you're it. So, I, I'm, it is always just the game to me. We're going to play it. Oh, I think it's calculating. Let's see. It's... Oh, it's changed, actually. Last time I did this quiz, it said I was from Norfolk and also Plymouth. So, this time, it says that I'm from Cambridgeshire, most likely. Cambridge and Dover. Hmm. Okay, so neither of those are places that I've lived. Once again, this is the second time I've done this quiz, and I never get a place where I've actually lived. Okay. I suppose I do have a very southerly accent of the UK, definitely. I sound very posh. I, I've heard that before. I've even been told once, well, multiple times actually, that I sound like, and I quote, a posh duck. Now, I, I'm not exactly sure what a posh duck sounds like, but apparently, like me. So, you know, quark quark. That just makes me sound like a really weird scientist. Okay, let's move on. Uh, sure, let's go with BuzzFeed. Because it's the first result. Uh, I'm about to go on holiday. It's 7am and I'm sat in the departure lounge. What do I drink? Cup of Earl Grey, builder's breakfast, coffee, a pint, or OJ? Well, even though I am British and it is a holiday, I think 7am, while I'm still in the airport, is a bit ambitious. Maybe once I'm actually at the place and, you know, I'm on the holiday, then, yeah, feel free. But while I'm still in the departures lounge, I'm not trusting myself. I'm going to lose something. Uh, coffee I don't drink. So it's OJ or one of the teas. And let's face it, I'm going to drink a cup of tea because tea... Ooh, actually, realistically speaking, I'd drink both because I'm that sort of a mad lad. Okay, the worst cup of tea I ever had, um, it was my own fault. We were camping and I was like seven or eight, so I didn't really understand tea. And at this point in time, I would have something like four sugars in my tea because I was a crazy child. And so I went to grow and get the sugar, but then we didn't have any. Ah, nightmare. And then I looked, and we didn't have any milk either. What was I going to do? Well, I couldn't get a substitute for milk, and we were too far away from anything to actually go and buy something, because it was late at night. Uh, so I thought I'll get a substitute for some sugar. And what's the sweetest thing that we have around? The sweetest thing that we had around was some McDonald's barbecue sauce. And me being seven years old, I thought that tastes great. It didn't. It was nasty. Don't mix black tea with a barbecue sauce. Hairdresser holds up the mirror and I hate my new haircut. Literally me almost every single time. I wouldn't call in sick. No, that's, that's just, yeah, I'd smile and nod probably. That seems, 
That seems like me. Introduced to a new colleague, but don't quite catch their name. How do I react? <sighs> now, if this is my first time being introduced to them, I might ask them to repeat their name. Or, I now I'm say, saying this one purely from experience because I did it and I'm, I've done it for some time with someone uh, I moved in with at one point and I forgot their name and so I've always just gone alright mate how you doing hey how are you um, so realistically speaking I'm gonna avoid using their name at all costs I wave at a friend in the street but realize it's not them oh I've done that too many times yeah, no, you you don't you don't do anything there. At this point, I would laugh it off purely because I I don't care enough. You and your partner are both adamant that each other eats the last hobnob. Oh no. Well, for one thing, I don't like hobnobs, so that's an easy solution. Yes, I know how controversial. Um, or at least I didn't like hobnobs last time I tried. Maybe my taste buds have changed. It has been a long time. You can't just eat it. That. That's horrible, no. But you don't want to have to open a whole nother packet just so that you can eat a hobnob and then eat a hobnob. Plus, what if you reach the end of that packet and you have the same conundrum? You're just delaying the problem. It's not going to work. The thing is, I don't think I would split it in two. That's not the sort of person I am. And I definitely know what a hobnob is, so I guess I have to argue about it and break up. <laughs> Please, take the last hobnob, I can't, no, no, you have it, please. Someone knocks into you at the bar and spills their beer on you. I immediately apologise, I don't even have to look at the answers. Um, yep, say sorry. That, it was probably my fault, you know. I mean, it wasn't, it was definitely your fault. You're an idiot, and I immediately despise you now for all time. But, I'm going to apologise, because I am... Being polite by not venting my rage at you? I don't know. It's 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 the British way. I'm sat in the window seat of a plane and need the lube at the pass. <laughs> this literally happened to me on the flight here. Oh, it, it was so bad. And it wasn't even like a small person who I could just squidge past. It was this big, massive Russian dude. And like, if I had have even tried to stand in my seat, he would have just, like, woken up immediately. Uh, what would I do? Gently wake them and ask them if they can let me out. Risk lasting internal damage by refusing to say anything. Cough louder and louder. Try to squeeze past them without waking them up. But they do just look at... Uh, camera stopped recording at some point. In all honesty, I'd probably do one of those two. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say anything, probably. You've started to bump into a new colleague on the train to work every morning. Oh, nightmare. Okay. Do I arrive at work half an hour early so I can avoid niceties? Change my commute? Talk to them? It's nice to be nice. Ignore them forever? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to change my commute. That would take too much effort. But I don't have to interact with them. I can just ignore them and hope that they don't see me. And I'm as British as Stephen Fry walking a corgi outside Buckingham Palace. Gosh, that's good. I, I should be allowed back in according to this quiz. I ever accidentally said thank you to a cash machine? Yup. Uh, if it's a particularly sunny day, will you co I'll comment on the weather no matter what weather it is, of course. Ground system. Uh, how dare you? This answer offends me on a personal level. Um, no, you do not exploit your friends for free drinks. That's... no. Uh... Yeah... I mean, to be honest, we don't really use it much in my friendship group back home. Purely because... We're just used to buying our own drinks, but... We could just do the round system. I think the main reason is just that the others don't drink as much as me, so... Yeah. It's easier for me to get my own drinks. Have I ever been to a street party? Um, most of the street parties that ha Britain has had occurred well before my birth. We haven't had much to celebrate since I was born. Um, not our family in particular, just the entirety of Britain. 
which is actually worse when I think about it. But there was one time where we had a street party, which was in year six, when William and Kate were getting married. We all had a big, big street party within the school grounds. And yeah, uh, that, was, that was pretty cool. So I guess I've been to a street party. I'm gonna count it as one. Was it for something related to a member of the royal family? <laughs> yup. In which of these situations is it most acceptable for you to drink before midday? Christmas is always the exception to the rule. What are the best kind of chips? French fries, no. Chip shop chips. Wedges, what? are wedges chips? Potato wedges? I don't count them as chips, really. They're, they're their own thing to me, because they're that good. Shoestring fries, no. Curly fries are pretty darn great. Sweet potato chips, I don't like sweet potato, so nope. All chips are, how dare you? Chips, you mean like the snacks you get in a foil? Ugh, chip shop chips for the win. Easy. How do I feel about pets? Oh, I love, I love dogs in particular. Dogs are the best. Don't really like cats, so that one is appealing. Uh, I grew up with pets and I do love animals, so that one also. Um, I've had a lot of pets. I've had hamsters. Uh, I've had fish multiple types. Um, can't really remember them all. I know I had some goldfish though. Uh, I've had a dog. I looked after my sister's rabbits for a while. I looked after one of my friend's guinea pigs for a while and then like it died while I was looking after it. Not from anything I did, just from old age. Just from old age. I was looking after a guinea pig and it just died of old age. It's a great look on me, isn't it? I do love most animals, but realistically speaking, if I was going to get a pet now, although I do really like snakes. Hmm. Snakes are really cool. I've always loved snakes. I'm the only person in my family who absolutely loves snakes, as far as I'm aware. I like snakes, but I think I'd choose dogs. Dogs are the best. They're literally man's best friend, so you know. Have I ever ended an email with cheers? Yup, but not often. I normally end it with kind regards, because then if someone does something to annoy you, you can do the most passive aggressive thing ever and just drop the kind, so it's just regards. See, it's effective. Do I consider myself European? Uh, I do because Britain is a part of Europe, even if it's not part of the EU from January or whatever, it is still a part of Europe, so I am still European no matter what. Geologically speaking, geographically speaking rather, I am European. On a scale of 1 to 10, oh, it's got to be right down at a 9, definitely. Do I have self-depreciating humour? Yep. Yep. Oh, I'm 77% British. Let's see. I'm very stereotypically British, which means I apologise way too much, even when things aren't my fault, and I would never, ever take the last biscuit without offering it around first. Now, that is true. Even though I said I would take the last biscuit, I would still offer it around. If someone spilt your drink on you in the pub, your immediate reaction would probably be to say sorry, and you're definitely truly relaxed without... And you're definitely truly relaxed without a good cup of... That should say you're definitely not truly relaxed without a good tr cup of tea, surely. Right? That's, it's not just me. Don't know when to stop recording again. Ugh. Last but not least, I want to take a practice test from Life in the UK, which takes a load of old questions from the actual, like, citizenship test and just remixes them. And it's really great for people who want to become a British citizen. And I figure, what's the best way to test whether I'm truly British enough to return home than to see whether I pass the citizenship test? Now, you can see I've done two already. Uh, the first one I passed really, really easily. It was 23 out of 24, and to be honest, most of them were ridiculously easy questions. And the ones that weren't, weren't relevant in the slightest. They were about footballers. Why does someone moving into Britain need to know about footballers? And the same with number 15, a lot of them just weren't relevant. Uh, so I'm going to take number 14 today. Let's give this a go. I sincerely hope that this has recorded. 
What is the only major golf tournament held outside? Why would I need to know? It's really relevant to know when you're moving to the UK what the only major golf tournament that isn't held in the US is. I mean, can you imagine living in the UK and not knowing this? It'd be despicable. Well, Wimbledon is tennis. Royal Ascot sounds like horse racing, but I don't know. English Premier League is definitely football. Open Championship. See, I don't trust anything with the word championship, so I'm going to say Royal Ascot. Of course it was. Yep. Who designed New Delhi to be the seat of government in India? So, we are learning about a government this time, which is a mild improvement over the last question. Just not, just not the British government. The one that you're going to need to know about if you're moving to the UK. I presume it would be a sir, because that sounds like something that a sir would get to do. So let's go with... Also, I know Robert Adams was a poet, I think, from Scotland, so... I'm gonna go with Sir Edwin. Well, hey. Who wrote music for King George I? So, we're just going back to the Georgian era. Really, really relevant for modern society. Uh, I mean, it'd be kind of ironic if it was Benjamin Britten. George Frederick Handel, I don't think it was George. Um, Edward Elgin, no. I'm gonna go William Walton as a guess. Of course, it was another George. Why wouldn't it be? The Georgian era was full of Georges. Of course it was George who wrote music for George. He probably also played it for George, George and George. When did the Irish Free State become a thing? <sighs> this is one I should know. Oh, uh, I like Irish history and I've forgotten it completely now. Oh, this is bad. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, 1922 was Bloody Sunday. So I don't think it was then. 1930s would probably be dealing with the Great Depression. I mean, we would have also been dealing with a depression in 1922 because of the post-war collapse, but still. Um, I am going to say that it's 1949 because that's when most of the British Empire fell apart, so it makes sense if we're just going, hey, we've colonised all of you and caused thousands of colonial atrocities for thousands of years, why don't you have your land back? It makes sense at this point that we'd just go, yeah, Ireland, you can, you should probably have your land back too. And then we had a big fight over who should get that little, little corner up there. So, you know, I don't know, 1949. Boom. Big brain. What is meant by common law? I'm pretty sure common law is anything that is written down, pretty much. It's the word of law rather than the spirit of law. So, yes, written down. Nope. Following previous decisions. Of course it is. I forgot. Common law is the thing where essentially you just do what's always been done. Because that's how most of British government works you, you it's not actually we haven't got a constitution as such we've got a whole load of separate pieces of paper which don't really make up a constitution everything in the uk is generally done by and eh, it, it's not really done that way let's not let's not break the street what was the black death another question exceptionally relevant to a modern person considering a the first outbreaks were nearly a thousand years ago in the uk at least as far as I'm aware, and B, the last outbreak that I know of was since 1665 and was more or less eradicated by the Great Fire of London, and C, we have a cure for it. So even if it did arise again, we'd be fine. But no, nope. what was the Black Death? That would have been a form of plague. The Civil War of 1642 split the country into which two groups? You know, there's two groups that just straight up don't exist anymore and haven't done since Charles II came back. This is relevant to modern life. House of York and Lancaster was War of the Roses, I should know. Lancaster University, wahoo, Tudors for the win. House of Commons and Lords is Parliament, Landowners and Slaves, that's just... 
weird. That's prehistoric. The Roundheads and the Cavaliers, with the Roundheads supporting Parliament and the Cavaliers supporting King Charles. I do not know how many members the Scottish Parliament has, which is a good question, because if you're going to go to Scotland, you should probably know. Uh, let's see, how many members would the Scottish Parliament have? The British Parliament has about 350, if I remember correctly. I reckon Scotland has 94. Not for any particular reason, just a total guess. I never learned about the Scottish Parliament because I've never lived in Scotland and I've never felt, I've never even visited Scotland actually, so I've never felt inclined to learn. I know some basics, but yeah, 129, of course. Well, it's good that they've got more representatives. That's, that's actually pretty darn great. What was a crucial aerial battle against the Germans? Essential for modern day Britain, yes. I mean, you could not, you could not survive in Britain unless you knew about the Battle of Britain. It's impossible. Like, I get that it was an important historical event, sure. But surely these questions should be about things that you actually need to know to function in British society. Who was R.A. Butler? The heck if I know. I think he was an MP. He might have been a poet. Oh, he was an MP. I was right. First Scottish King. William I was England's first king, even though technically we had kings before that, but hey. Uh, Harold, nope. He was the one who was killed by William I. Kenneth McAlpin. Doesn't sound like it, so I'm going to go with Canute. It was Ken. Good old King Ken. I don't know. The only Scottish king that I'm well aware of is James VI of Scotland, James I of England, and of course I know Mary Queen of Scots, his mother, and a little bit of that because they happen to be also in the English line, and so I, I found that interesting, and I wanted to research it, but I never even thought about researching the Scottish line in particular. I really need to do more research into Scotland and Ireland, don't I? Uh, when did the Vikings first attack Britain? It's... Oh, when did they first attack? One second. It was the it was the summer. Of, it was the summer of seven ninety three when we sailed across the Great North Sea. Horrible histories. I'm relying on you. This isn't actually seven ninety three, but it's the closest answer there is. So seven eighty nine, which is actually seven ninety eight. Sorry, no, it was seven eighty nine. Is the correct answer. Which is actually a closer answer to 793. I don't don't know why I... I'm not doing well today, am I? Ugh. At this rate, I might struggle to get back in because I think you're only allowed six wrong answers. So if I get one more wrong, I shouldn't be allowed back in the UK despite the fact that I've lived there for 19 years. 19 and a half years. And even after that, I still went and lived within the Commonwealth. So... Oh well. What is Richard Arkwright remembered for? The heck if I know. Efficiently running factories. I doubt that. Uh, improving steam power, possible. Creating a carding machine or cutting. I doubt he's remembered for cutting hair. That just sounds ridiculous. I'm gonna say improving steam power. Nope, efficiently running factories. I may not be allowed back in the UK now. Where do you have to be registered to be able to vote? Okay, this is a good question. It's actually relevant. Uh, that would be the electoral register. Yes. See, when it comes to things that actually matter, I know. When it comes to who the heck this random guy was who lived 300 years ago, I don't. I may have studied history, but I studied the events of history. I didn't study that one dude. What was an important export of England in the Middle Ages? Potatoes? No. Wool? Not really, as far as I want. Stone and glass? <sighs> Don't think it would have been stone. Can't see why we'd export stone. Wool actually is in, entirely possible because we do have a significant population of sheep. Yep. Who led the team of scientists to split the atom for the first time? I think that was Ernst Rutherford. It's not particularly important nowadays unless you're going to start working with nuclear physics. Who wrote the Canterbury Tales? Uh, I think that was Chaucer. 
who won the election in 1945. I do know this because I found it absolutely hilarious when I was studying uh, Britain specifically in terms of political and social change from 1780 through 1990 and oh okay so World War II has just ended. We're having our first election since the 30s, really, because we, we kind of didn't really have an election. We had a national government up at that point. And, you know, we're having this election. And Churchill, who was the front runner at the time, just goes, well, you can't let Labour win, otherwise they'll install some kind of socialist Gestapo thing. And immediately everyone just went, we just beat the Nazis, and now you're talking about the Gestapo and calling other British people the Gestapo. Kind of insensitive, dude. We we're all gonna vote Labour. So it was Labour. Boom. How many people lost their lives in the decades after 1969 due to violence in Northern Ireland? Okay, so this is the Troubles. Um, a British guy talking about the Troubles, probably not the best idea, considering everything. Uh, I don't know how many people lost their lives. I sure as heck hope it wasn't 60,000. I'm gonna go with the one that I hope it was. I don't know. Oh, it was. Well, I mean, it's still terrible because 3,000 people lost their lives, which flipping sucks, but uh, it wasn't 60,000? There's no way to positively spin 3,000 people died, is there? Who won the gold medals for ice dancing at the Olympic Games in 1984? That would be Torval and Dean. I only know that because my mum flipping loved dancing on ice when I was younger. And, yeah, Torval and Dean. Where is Hadrian's Wall? I know this one as well because I like Romans. Romans are interesting. And this was built by Romans. Specifically, the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Also, can I just point out to uh, Donald Trump, if he's watching by chance. Yeah, we built a wall uh, a couple of thousand years ago to keep, the, to keep the brutish out up in the north. To keep those filthy, uh, those filthy cows out. Because we, we were good Roman citizens. And um, yeah, that didn't work. Which is just as well, because the... the Northern and the Scottish, flipping lovely people. They're brilliant. But it is not in the north of Scotland. It is in the north of England because that's where the divide is. It'd be kind of hard to separate Scotland off from England if you were placing it in the north of Scotland. Where should you write to if you wish to make a complaint about the police? Generally a good question. See? Occasionally this quiz has a good question. Every so often. I think this makes, what, four out of 24. So 20 of these questions have had very little to do with actual life in the UK nowadays. Brilliant. Um, now, you would write to the Chief Constable. Yes, you'd write to the House of Commons, of course. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're just gonna write up to them and while they're sorting out Brexit, they'll all just go, hold up. This guy had a bad experience with the police. And I'm not allowed back into England. I got two things wrong, more than I could. If I had an 18, I could have got, could have got back in the UK. But, as is, if I had have taken this as a genuine British citizenship test, I wouldn't be allowed back into my country. It raises some questions as to why these things are actually on the test. Maybe, just, just maybe, we need to think about reformatting it so that it actually, you know, asks questions that matters. Just, just putting it out there. Like, I'm, I'm not saying that who won the election in 1945 isn't important. Nor am I saying that the Black Death has no relevance to anyone in Britain today at all. What I am saying is it's not going to affect the vast majority of people, so ask the questions to ask, like how do you get onto the electoral register? Who do you call in an emergency? Who do I write to if I have something to complain about, about my local area? You know, the questions that actually matter. I don't know. Anyway, with all that said, I have 
sufficiently proven that whilst I am British, I am not allowed back in my own country. Uh, it's gonna make my journey back awkward, isn't it? Just walk up with a British passport, they see me and they're just like, nope, we saw your video, you failed that test. How, go back, how dare you? And then I'll arrive back in New Zealand and I'll be like, your visa is expired, go back. And I'll be caught in limbo forever as neither a British citizen nor living over here. Okay, thanks for watching all. I shall catch you next time. I sincerely hope all of this recorded because if it didn't, I'm going to stab myself in the eye.